where we're double the hosts. Today, we are actually double the topics and double the fun. I'm Dan. I'm Charity. I'm Sarah. I'm Alan. (laughs) And as we've done in the previous couple episodes, we're going to go ahead and pick out a couple of random topics to see what we're talking about today. Alan, please do the honors. Me? I get to? Me? Okay. (laughs) The very one. You have been chosen. (laughs) All right. Number one. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so excited. Here we go. The most expensive thing you've ever Bought. Oh, okay. that's that was okay. opposite from a couple episodes ago. Uh huh. Number two. Number two. Second topic. <clears throat> Here we go. I am opening it up and I am reading it. What is it? <laughs> Dinosaurs and extinct animals. Oh, okay. okay. Interesting. What's Interesting. the most expensive dinosaur? Well, you've what's ever the most expensive dinosaur you ever bought? <laughs> Put them together. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I mean, we you know the other day we kind of talked about uh, when we talked about cheapest item that we ever bought or least expensive item. There was some confusion about whether or not we got a really good sale or whether or not we uh, bought something that was like just for pennies, right? Mm-hmm. So I think today, instead of the most expensive item that you didn't have to take out like a, oh, loan, like a loan for, basically. Oh, right. see, I yeah, have my answer all set, and I gotta think of it. You're like, out, right? like college no. education. Yeah, because yeah, everybody has a house. Everybody, you know, it was not so everybody, fun. But <laughs> I did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, because you did, that was the most expensive you bought over time, yes. right? Yeah. But how about at one go? What was the most expensive? Ooh. Anybody have any thoughts uh, off the top of your head? Mm, off yeah. the top of my head, the most expensive thing I bought was my new bed. So yes. this was this was 2014, 2015. I had finished college and I came back home. I had spent lots of time. Like I went to a couple different colleges. You know, college beds are terrible. Mm, and then yeah. the year the years before that, I was on tour, so I was living on a bus. So obviously, there's no good sleeping arrangement. So pretty much from like after high school to like all the way at the end of college my back was like no we're not doing this anymore <laughs> and so then I came back home and I still had the same bed that I had like the same twin I had when I was a kid and so I remember the first couple nights sleeping on that bed and like my feet were kind of hanging off and like, and <laughs> I'm it, an adult now yeah yeah that's basically what happened it yeah. was lumpy and like I was getting upset because it was two in the morning I'm like I still haven't went to sleep yet I'm like I'm an adult I want a big bed and so I ended up buying myself like a big mattress like queen size nice. memory foam had like the big box screen yeah. it was, that's probably yeah. the most expensive thing that i and that was at the oh. time i didn't have that much money either so that and was like that was a big purchase for and me that was time. um that was when we first met you dan because you helped deliver that yeah right? yeah that was, that yeah, was, yeah, that was your truck yep, yes truck. yes <laughs> <laughs> and so our relationship with dan <laughs> <laughs> began on the yeah. bed yeah <laughs> Those prepositions mean nothing. <laughs> My bed in the bed of his truck. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to get out of that hole. So, Dan, you want to go? Yeah, so I decided uh, for this one, just as we were talking, I'm going to put sort of uh, restrictions on myself, right? So, I'm not going to count things that my wife and I bought together, even mm-hmm. though, like, you know, we share money and stuff like that, because mm-hmm. that would be appliances and things mm-hmm. of that nature. So, the thing, the most expensive thing I probably bought myself was last Friday. Oh, um, recent story. So in the last couple of weeks of the year, I've been trying to get my hands on a new video game system. PlayStation oh. 5 and they are impossible to find. Really? They're just so hard because of all the shortages and scalpers okay. and all this stuff. So I've had to follow people online that like post when things go up immediately and try mm. to get it. So I was up at six, the the alert went out, the mm. Target had some in stock. So I jumped on my app and nice. I was hitting place order over and over again, error, error, error constantly. <laughs> and it went through. So it was oh, a man. $500 on a, on a video game oh, system. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, hopefully you get your money's worth. So far it's been a lot of fun so okay. that's like black friday for you but yeah that's like christmas. cyber yeah. yeah you got to get up early and get click that button yeah, before they're yeah. yeah who yeah. said christmas was over not with all that going on <laughs> so that's probably the most expensive thing i could think of that i that i purchased uh oh wow just for myself okay yeah. Alan, you got something? The first thing that popped into my mind was it's not the most expensive thing I've ever purchased, but at the time it was. So I'm going to go with that one. I was in San Francisco, was working at a an independent video store. I was an RA um, for the college that I attended, and I was uh, dating a very beautiful young lady who is now my wife. And it was our it was the first Christmas mm. while we were dating, and there was this Apple store 
And this was at the time when an iPod was huge. I mean, oh, that, yeah. that was the thing to have. Mm-hmm. And so I went into the Apple store and I got an iPod mini, not even the regular iPod, the iPod mini. And I, I knew she would love it. I knew it would be fantastic because we both loved to listen to music. And neither one of us had uh, a vehicle. When you're in San Francisco, you don't, one, you can't afford a vehicle. Mm-hmm. You can't afford the vehicle itself. You can't afford to park the vehicle. Mm-hmm. You can't afford anything. So it, um, you do a lot of walking, you're on a lot of public transportation, and an iPod would be fantastic. I knew mm-hmm. she'd love it. And when I went to buy it, this would have been gosh early 2000s so it was over five hundred dollars for an ipod wow and that and i remember thinking alan what are you doing but i i (laughs) really like oh i i i was in love so i did you kind of know that you guys were going to get married at this point or was it like well so the money would stay in the family i just <laughs> I think I'll get to use this too. So. I just I, I knew that she would like it. I knew that she was really special and I knew that we would be together for a long time. I didn't know if if You didn't we know if forever get, was in the picture. Yeah, I didn't know if at that that point but, but you I, bought it you bought the iPad or iPod mini, so you sealed the deal right there. I pretty much. <laughs> and and we still have it. And here's the thing. It's worth nothing now you know? it's worth it absolutely you, got, you gotta wait a little longer yeah you know? but i mean we still have it and i i got a um a little kind of belt clip little uh case for it to slide into mm-hmm. and it looked like uh turntables and things like that it's we like used a shrine to go, now huh? yeah we used to go to like clubs and and uh, that was a lot of fun so Did you go to clubs there, and like listen to your own music <laughs> Great question. No, I mean, there's plenty of clubs in San Francisco that played fantastic music. It was mostly during the day, daylight yeah. hours yeah. that you would need it. But, Sorry, I had this funny visual. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that was the first most expensive thing that I had ever purchased at one time. And it was for my then girlfriend, now wife. And then should I go with the most expensive thing that I've purchased? Or yeah, if you want no? to. Uh, yeah, well, you already you started off. You're, you're, you're hinting around. Yeah, you've, you've they're made Apple curious. products. So it, it was uh, 2015, and we were doing really well in California. We bought an iMac, a Mac Mini, and a MacBook Pro all at once. Whoa. Ooh, and jackpot, that was the whole set. So, I mean, Do you walk was... into the Apple store with your monocle and everything? Yeah. <laughs> Bags. I say buy good man. Give us the most expensive Apple product. Go fetch it for us. Why don't you up the store? <laughs> but that was super impressive, and I remember we were both. We were both telling ourselves we're going to use this all the time, and we have. I mean, it, we've definitely it it's was an investment there, piece. It, mm. Yeah, it was. Yeah, everything that both of us use mm-hmm. uh, uh, use technology, and we um, use it every day. So all at once, that was that was a big bill, oh, and it was oh. and it was really risky, but. We needed it, and uh, we've enjoyed it. But yeah, that was a big one. Excellent, excellent. So so yeah. far, we have a uh, practical bed yeah. and <laughs> electronics. Yeah, electronics yeah. <laughs> Sarah, yeah. how about you? Uh, for me, I mean, I have since being in college, I have purchased you know computers and stuff, and those have been costly. But I will say the very the first time I can remember that I bought something that for me was expensive was when I was in college. And this is around a time based off of a couple other episodes back talking about the cheapest thing and us, you know, our first jobs. And I was not making a lot of money in college. Like I said, I was making about five twenty five an hour, which back then was not minimum wage. So it was much less. So I'm working during the summer and at, at school and all that kind of stuff. And this was, it's a really corny, but it was really, this is during that time where I was having a hard time at school and I really needed a good laugh. And so I discovered this British duo called Morecambe and Wise. <laughs> I know it always leads back to that. I was wondering, yeah, if that was the thing that you had bought. Yeah, it's been so a couple <laughs> episodes since you mentioned them. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Morgan Wise are that they, they were a, a British duo back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, but I just love their humor; it's really similar to mine. So if you hear my corniness, you probably would like Morgan <laughs> Wise. But I was like, oh my gosh, I need to 
get their stuff. Like I was looking at clips on YouTube, but it just wasn't enough. And I was like, I need to buy these their DVDs. And so this was my first time doing an international purchase because, you know, they're in England, so I actually had to order the DVDs not in America. So, you know, you're going to order obscure DVDs from another country. You know, th- those aren't cheap. Sounds no. sketch, too. Not at all. Yeah. So that, well, <laughs> some of them were because some of them I got from like Japan yeah. and some from England. I got a couple from Australia. And that was my first time actually ordering something outside the U.S. with my little my little paycheck, you know, because each the DVDs because they were kind of obscure, you know, in U.S. dollars I was probably spending about thirty dollars, twenty five, thirty dollars per DVD. Oh, I was like, and that's the most expensive thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, per, the per expensive. DVD is what's expensive. Is what, but, but you're also doing, what makes sense. You're also doing it from someone who worked many hours, made not a lot of money. Like the most money I think I made during the summer was like three hundred bucks. So that was like. Taking my life savings and buying for me was at the time the most expensive thing I'd ever bought, and that's why I still have them because I'm like I spent a lot of college money on that. <laughs> Some blood, sweat, and tears in those DVDs. It, well, in a way, yeah. So that one, so so while I can do that now without, I mean, not that I would pay that much for something unless I need really need it to, I can have the choice to do it. Back then, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be a lot of money. <laughs> Send, you know. Um, so I. I in that case, I would consider that the most expensive thing that I, that I have. Oh, that, so not just like big dollar amount, but yeah. relative to yeah, because it yeah, was it was a much. big deal at the time when I wasn't making anything. And those DVD, I mean, not those in particular, but just DVDs that were from outside the United States were super expensive because I used to go to like Suncoast yeah. Video and buy like you know Japanese like anime, yeah, yeah, you know, like box sets and stuff like that, and they're <laughs> horribly expensive. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. I remember terrible. Before um, you could do like UFC, you know, pay per views and things for that. Uh, you like there was a thing called pride fights Mm -hmm. and they Mm -hmm. they were in japan and if you wanted to watch like mixed martial arts like in a in a professional setting it was pride um fights and you could only get those as imports oh yeah wow yeah Yeah. come a long way in technology oh absolutely so we did promise you two topics yes so for our second we're going to switch gears here a little bit (laughs) dvds to dinosaurs no idea how about dinosaurs (laughs) This one we're gonna have to put the clutch down all the way to the floor. <laughs> okay, but since we were talking about extinct, no longer in existence, and dinosaurs, you oh. brought up the iPod, oh, which, that's true. which could be oh, yeah. a dinosaur Segway. of technology, an iPodosaur, yeah. which is a really <laughs> extinct <laughs> dinosaur. But they don't, they don't, nobody's got them anymore. That's so that true. that's the connection. That's, so here's where iPods still live on. So the iPod Touch is sort of, and I know this only because I have a ten year old. It's the training phone yeah. that, mm-hmm. that that parents use. Uh, it's like, okay. a, precur- it's like a precursor for smartphones. Yeah. If the batteries still work, because I have an iPod Touch, but well, it lasts maybe like them. three minutes. You can still <laughs> buy it, and they have cameras with them too, okay. so uh, your preteens can have a phone, they can message, and nice. uh, as long as they have Wi-Fi, okay. they can communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, that's everybody. super handy then. Yeah. No. So that's, that's what that <laughs> So is. it's not quite the dinosaur of technology yeah, that we were trying to say. It, it, it connects. Oh, I'm going with it. It okay. connects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's connected. So in that case, uh, Alan, since you kind of uh, ruined our little segue there. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, but you're right. Favorite the, the dinosaur. Spitting bladder. Oh, okay. Favorite yeah. dinosaur. <laughs> Velociraptor. Uh, Do we just become best friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Favorite uh, dinosaur. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, in talking about this uh, oh, dinosaurs, got to go back to Jurassic Park. That's where, uh, at least for me, I, I mean, I, I've always had an interest in dinosaurs, but it was, <laughs> it was, um, Jurassic Park, it was 1993, and I remember I w- it was my 13th birthday, and it was my first birthday that I didn't want to party. I, mm-hmm. It wasn't cool to have a, a, a party where your people get dropped off. So I had myself, and I want to say three other buddies, and all I wanted to do was go to the movies and watch Jurassic Park, mm. and it was a blast. <laughs> and Steven Spielberg nailed it yeah nice. absolutely that was um i remember when i during my third after my third attempt at trying to get through all of jurassic park in the theater because i was all of six years old at the time oh. when it came out <laughs> oh and i gosh. could not so i kept failing <laughs> my parents had to keep taking us out of the theater so we tried it three times and then ended oh up watching oh, it on vhs because it got way too scary okay oh. i because you fell asleep <laughs> no no, no it's just like way too scary asleep. so uh, after that it third time real, i decided like... i really wanted to like become a paleontologist yeah. like alan grant sure, right sure. that lasted about six months 
I really dig dinosaurs, but not, you know, obviously now they, we know that they're not like they were in the movies, but I still think of them like from Jurassic Park because it was so realistic. It was so real. That was, uh, that was the first dinosaur movie that I saw that wasn't stop go. Mm -hmm. And and in the making of it, that was the big thing. Like um, the CGI had finally gotten to a point like after that, I mean, so much money got put into CGI oh, yeah. because yeah. everybody realized that was the way to do it. And yeah. it was fantastic. And yeah. it also introduced me to Michael Crichton. I hadn't read any of Michael Crichton right. before then. I was like, let me read the book. And the book was fantastic great. as well. Very different, nice. but great. Very different. Yeah. Look at you yeah. with your glowing reviews. <laughs> I, I know. Everything is fantastic. <laughs> well, the thing about that, that's so interesting with, with dinosaurs, and um, I don't want to get Controversial, controversial, controversial. Con- you, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's dig that one out. <laughs> <laughs> that one was stuck in the ground. You wanna, you wanna, petrified. You want to give that one? <laughs> <laughs> you need, need a little bit of dusting off before we display that. Yeah, let's, let's uh-huh. unearth that, shall we? Right. Yeah. But um, but in growing up, there were a lot of um, conflicting views that I had with dinosaurs growing up Southern Baptist to where I am now. There was a lot of conflicting ideas that that ideologies behind them wanted to put on the thing itself. And whereas now, I mean, dinosaurs are just fantastic. And, right. and there's so much mystery to how massive these animals were and just how the earth was Hold while they you're buzzing i think oh, we're picking it up okay yeah oh. sorry man that's okay no let me tell him call you later <laughs> shut up we're talking about dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> my dad knew i was uh talking about my southern baptist <laughs> <laughs> yeah he felt the vibrations he felt it. yeah he was like what, what, what's going on there what's going on with stuff i was just reading i have a, a book that i actually won in college due to a paper that i wrote in a history class and i was reading about the bering strait and it, it talks it's about the the first peoples of the americas coming up from china into siberia and just what the what the ice bridge was and and not even the bering strait but what's underneath it could be considered a subcontinent in and of itself if the waters ever receded to the place that they were, were they, hmm. and I'm getting way into <laughs> you it. are, I was getting deep, deep, deep into right. it. Anyway, so dinosaurs are are stereotypically uh, kind of a, a boy's obsession, I think, in a oh. lot of ways. Like people assume. Yeah, typically, yeah. Do, Sarah, Charity, would you have an interest in dinosaurs when you were younger or today? Still? I I actually have more of an interest in extinct animals. Okay. Um, so I really, for some reason, got into the dodo bird. Oh, okay. Because they were such a hideous bird. She had it as her <laughs> laptop background for I did. years. Like, oh, yeah? Is that <laughs> your spirit animal? <laughs> I <dodo>. hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just the, the way they looked, the shape, they were just such an ugly creature that it fascinated me. I know that's mm-hmm. a weird thing to say. And I know they went extinct in like the 1600s, so they've been gone for hundreds of years. But it's just the fact that they were just a weird animal. And it's funny, sometimes when I go to the zoo or I watch like National Geographic, and I look at how birds look now, you know, because a lot of them are derivative of prehistoric or extinct animals and so sometimes i look at flamingos because they just kind of have that look they look like dodos on stilts with the, with really bill. yeah well just the way their beaks look birds are just terrible anyway <laughs> <laughs> birds all birds birds are terrible <laughs> but bird, and then there's that one what's the, the the one that everyone's been talking about the the shoe bill uh, bird or oh, something. Oh, that ridiculous monstrosity yeah, the, of a bird. The bird is about <laughs> the, huge. The bird is about five foot tall. It's the size of Texas. Yeah, and and it's and it's a it's some kind of it's a a direct descendant of some kind of dinosaur type bird, but they're still around. They are huge, almost like human looking. Their bill is it, it's it's weird. They almost look like humans. It's odd. Huh. So um so in terms of that, it's almost like even though dinosaurs in the way that we see it on TV might not exist, I feel like. Their great 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 whatever yeah, like a komodo dragon is yeah, yeah like Sentence. like alligators, alligators. Like yeah. lizards like some of that stuff while they're smaller versions I think that's kind of our dinosaur yeah. if oh, you absolutely. want to think of it yeah. like that yeah, for sure yeah you know all I need now is a pith helmet and some khakis and you know well, I, thought <laughs> was, I, I thought it was uh, it, it was mind blowing to me because I just assumed that all the artist renderings and illustrations of dinosaurs were what they looked like right. and then of course now. 
uh, in petrified rocks, they're also finding uh, feathers along with the skeletons. And mm-hmm. so yeah. Yeah. our depictions of what dinosaurs looked, you know, all we have is their skeletal remains. Yes. Best guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Best yeah. guess, yeah. So before we head out, Charity, any favorite dead animals that you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's worded. <laughs> Do you like dead stuff? Well, I was just saying, I don't even know if I know any extinct, extinct animals other than what um, Sarah mentioned about the dodo. Since working at PBS, though, I have watched Wild Kratts and Dinosaur, Dinosaur Train. Train. And so oh, like yeah. that, those are the images that were going through my head while we were talking about this. But I think most people that know me know my favorite animal is pandas. And so I'm happy that they're not on the oh, extinct yeah. list True. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. more of them are being born and you know there's big programs and stuff to keep them alive so yeah that's a better way to phrase it I guess. So, so, so it's more more endangered and not extinct well and i don't yeah. think they're even considered endangered anymore now oh, they, okay. they need to still populate more because it takes a while for baby pandas to be born and all that and so i don't think they're too far from the list but i think in the past few years they finally have bred enough pandas that they're no longer endangered i think yeah. they might still be in danger of it but they're not on that list anymore because mm, gotcha, the numbers right. have risen so oh. instead of talking about extinct animals you'd rather not add more extinct animals yes, to the list. Exactly. unless they're birds right yes all right yes. <laughs> Sounds good. That's our takeaway, apparently. As long as they're birds, it's blittering. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for uh, chatting about these two topics with us today. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Sarah to tell you where you can listen to other shows. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, if you want to listen to all of our episodes, we have them on our website at doublestuffpod.com. You can check us out on all the different podcast platforms. Also, check out uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Double Stuff Podcast, and on Twitter at Double Stuff P, and that's the letter P. Mm-hmm.